it's Andre from the High Performance Academy and we're here at World Time Attack and one of the cars we were really interested in having a good look at is the RP968. It's one of the most extreme Porsches you're likely to see anywhere in the world and it's been developed in what is a relatively short time frame specifically for this event. Now we're here with Sammy from Dynamic Aero Solutions who's responsible for the aero package on this car and we thought we'd take the opportunity to have a chat to Sammy about that development. Now Sammy, you've actually got a fairly interesting history, uh, probably quite unique in that you've worked directly in Formula One. Now uh, that's pretty uncommon so I'd like to start by uh, getting a bit of a, a background on how you actually get into working in F1 as an engineer. Yeah sure, well Formula One for me as a, as a child was always my ambition, that was my dream, to be an engineer in Formula One and do aerodynamics. Uh, so the way that I approach that is obviously I first of all got myself the education that I required and that was to get the right degree for me was an aerospace engineering degree and then I went on and studied PhD. Now while doing my undergrad degree I got as much experience as I possibly could developing a solar car for the University of New South Wales and that was a great experience, gave me my first real taste of motor racing and then I went on and did my PhD, studied aerodynamics very specifically and took that opportunity to also help local racing car teams to develop their cars and to gain improve my experience. That experience and that networking opportunity then led to contacts that opened up doors for me in, in Formula One and in uh, 2007 I was very fortunate to get my first opportunity to work for a Formula One team which was the Toyota Formula One team in Cologne in Germany. So that, uh, that dream of coming from a country like uh, Australia and aspiring to get into Europe and work in an F1 team obviously is totally achievable if you set your mind to it. Now for us watching F1 on the TV it seems like a, a lot of glitz and glamour. Could you give us some insight into what it's actually like in the real world working in a high level F1 team? Yeah well um, I'm sure a lot of Australians can tell you because there's a lot of Australians involved in Formula 1 overseas that it's not all glitz and glamour. Um, the glitz and glamour is saved, I think, for the television only. But in the factory, it's a, it's quite a hard slog. And um, it's not for us race, for us engineers who are designing the car, doing the aerodynamics and the, the mechanical design of the car. We do effectively work a, a normal nine to five job when uh, deadlines permit. But quite often, there's many deadlines that we have to hit, and then that's when the the real slog starts. So. There are some long hours, but for us people in the in the office, it's it's not as bad as what you see on television for them as the mechanics working really quite late. Now, in terms of access to equipment and technology, obviously F1 is is the the pinnacle. Uh, can you give us some some idea of what you are actually doing uh, for Toyota? Yeah. So when I started off at Toyota, I was just a, a junior CFD engineer, and my, and my job was to look at CFD models, look at the results coming out of them, which were simulations that let you predict the airflow over a vehicle, and then give direction, give suggestions on things that we could change. And um, basically we had free reign to try as many different things that we thought were a logical thing to test. And that information that we gathered was then fed to people who do wind tunnel testing, and then they would then try and develop the car with the information that we had given them. And that was really just the first stepping stone. Then I progressed on eventually in Caterham. I was the head of CFD development. And then that's when I was looking after a group of engineers who were doing that effective job. And that then started exposing me to other parts of the design of the car, interacting more with departments outside of the aerodynamics department. Now, Caterham as a, as a team or a smaller team than the likes of Toyota, what's the, the differences between working in those two teams in terms of your, your involvement in the design of the car? Yeah, when you're involved in a really big team, my experience is that you're very much focused on one particular area. Each person is very specific um, in their job role. Whereas when you go to the smaller teams, you're exposed to a lot more just because there isn't as many people to cover all the bases. So there's positives and negatives to both. And I think I really loved working at Toyota, but I also really loved being exposed to lots of different things that I saw at Caterham. So yeah, it's just, I think that's the main difference. Now you've talked about CFD and you've also talked about wind tunnel testing and I, I guess that's one of the areas where the, the budgets in F1 do allow proper wind tunnel testing. How important is that CFD design in, in uh, speeding up or fast tracking the development in the wind tunnel and I guess the other question I've got is how closely do CFD and wind tunnel testing correlate? Yeah, well I think the important thing for everyone to realise is that you can't see the airflow over a car. Um, and 
the thing that CFD helps us do is visualize the flow. So once we can start seeing how the air flows over the car, then that gives us ideas that helps us guide us in what the optimum way to develop a car would be. And so that's where really where the CFD supports a wind tunnel test or even a, a full design like we have behind us right now. The CFD lets us visualize the flow, that gives us directions and it gives us lets us try things which are more than just trial and error. There actually there's actually a logical reason behind trying those things and it reduces the amount of development time involved in achieving a, a particular goal. Now let's uh, let's move on to this car, the RP968. So a little bit different to a single seater F1 car. And how did you go about sort of designing a starting point for the aero package on this car? Yeah, so this time last year, I think is when we really started. And the first thing we did was walk up and down pit lane and just have a look at other people and saw what they were doing. And that was beneficial first for me as an engineer because it let me understand what other people were trying and what potentially was working and not and what might be worth investigating. But secondly, it was also very important for me building and establishing a relationship with the owner of the vehicle. So by doing that, I got an idea of what his vision was, what his goal was, and I knew which direction to, to pursue in. So that was, I think, the first step of developing the car and car. Um, yeah. And uh, the, the package that you've got, obviously the car's only just hit the track. I'm going to assume that you use CFD in your design. How well has it worked out so far in your testing to date? Yeah, so, so far the numbers are quite infant. I'm still processing a lot of the data that I need to be confident in the results that I'm getting, but the initial results are quite positive in that they're, they're respecting what the CFD suggested will be occurring. So I'm, I'm very happy so far. Now actually let's, let's just talk about that testing, so obviously uh, there's no budget here for wind tunnel testing so you've gone straight from CFD to the racetrack and what are you using on the car, what data are you looking at to validate your CFD uh, design? Yeah so we've been very lucky that with this project the owner's been very generous, he's bought us force transducers so we're actually measuring the forces at each of the contact patches effectively and that is helping me directly measure what the downforce is that's acting on the car. So I'm taking that data, it's quite noisy because of the nature of being on a race circuit and going over bumps or curbs and I'm processing that data to try and deduce what the downforce values will be on the track. Can you give us some idea so far of the actual downforce it's producing? It's plenty. <laughs> All right, we know that the aero development, particularly in World Time Attack, is a very sensitive area, so I do understand. Look, it's been interesting getting some insight on that, Sammy, and, and I thank you for giving us a, a brief intro on how to get involved in Formula One. Maybe some of our viewers out there might uh, take some info from that in uh, their travels and how they're going to get into the pinnacle of the sport. And uh, if people are interested in connecting with you and your company, how can they do that? Well, you can contact me at my email address, which is sdiasi. I -N -O -S at hotmail.com um, I think that's the best way to contact me we can take it from there Okay, thanks for talking to us today Sammy and good luck for the weekend Thank you very much, all the best For online tuning courses visit learntotune.com